Hello everyone. Um, I'm going to get Marino Evino Lily on with us here um, and we will get going. Let's see. And there we go. Instagram has apparently added some new features that uh, kind of threw off our game a bit, but I think, there yeah. we go. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hi. In case anybody else didn't know, apparently you can now do a video call chat through Instagram. Um, not the same as going live, but <laughs> it looks the same. <laughs> yeah, and this is the first time I've gone live, so. <laughs> oh, yay, that's exciting. Yeah. I have gone live a decent amount, but it's still infrequent enough that every time I pull it up, I'm like, okay, what are we doing? Because <laughs> they've always changed something in between the times that I've gone live. <laughs> yeah, that's something I have trouble keeping up with is like the social media and how they change things so much. Right. Uh, and they go so <laughs> fast through everything. Like you have to be in there all the time or else you're going to miss what they're doing. And then you go back and completely lost. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and my husband's a computer programmer, so he's always talking about user interface and, you know, how it should be easy and accessible for people. And I'm a high school teacher, and sometimes <laughs> it's like, I ask my students, I'm like, how do you use this? How do you figure this out? And they're like, well, you know how to do this. I'm like, yeah, but I can't figure this part out. <laughs> they're right. like, just try it out. I'm like, uh, okay. <laughs> But I think sometimes, too, uh, the different companies are trying to make it super easy, but then they mm -hmm. do it to the point where, like, they understand what's going on, but if you're not in it every single day, it's not going to be as intuitive to you. Right, yeah, and I've even watched tutorials on how to use, like, certain aspects of social media, and there are, like, these TikTok stars that you know we're trying to explain TikTok to me because I was thinking about getting on it yeah <laughs> and they like spend all this time explaining why TikTok is great but then when it actually comes to showing how to use it <laughs> if they go through it so fast I'm like you're definitely not a teacher because right. I can't follow you I have to go back and <laughs> rewind like 10 times <laughs> so yep yeah, that's, uh, I actually have a Instagram course thing that I've been doing, but mostly just so that I can kind of keep on top of all the new things as they come out. Because otherwise, like, I get busy doing stuff, and then I miss out on things, and I come back, and like, I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> yep, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yep. But it looks like we've got quite a few people hopping on. Hello, everybody. Yeah. Good we've morning all from sorts Arizona. Of people. <laughs> yeah, it's good to see everyone. Thanks for jumping on with us. And I'm Shayna from yumiyarns.com, uh, and I do the design portion. And this is Lily. Uh, she's our featured dyer this month for the Indie Sock Along, and her company is Merino Evino, which I absolutely love. Um, I'm not great with Spanish, but I have <laughs> enough to know that it's wool and wine, basically. Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> I li really love your little logo. It's so cute. Thank you. Yeah, well, I think a lot of crafters dream about having their own business one day. And I've tried to make it work a few times in the past, like um, selling what I've made or I thought about designing, but man, I don't know how you guys do it. You have so <laughs> many things you have to do in order to design. Um, and so out of math. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> And I try with math, but, you know, gauges. <laughs> That's, and for me, a lot of it, like, I'm not a huge fan of math. But, like, in my head, like, it works out. I, I kind of visualize things in graphs. And I don't know. I don't know how it works for me, but it works. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. I make yeah. some pretty silly math mistakes. But I also... <laughs> Same try to keep up with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but go ahead. Uh, oh, so yeah, so a re like a, the long term goal is to open up my own yarn cafe um, here in Flagstaff. Um, because I feel like cafes are open to crafters, you know, but we can mm -hmm. spend hours there nursing one <laughs> cup of coffee, <laughs> right? And it's not really the best for business. So I thought, okay, 
like it'd be so much fun to have like a yarn store where people could buy coffee and pastries and then later in the afternoon have like wine or something yeah. um, and I wanted to call it sip and knit because I love puns but there's a, <laughs> actually a yarn store on the east coast with that name already I was like okay so I <laughs> I was in Oregon a few years ago with my brother and sister-in-law um because they they wanted to move to Portland and they did but we ended up in Flagstaff and um and my brother-in-law loves puns. And so I was telling him how sad I was that that name was taken. And he's like, well, what do you like? What's your favorite type of wool? And at the time it was Merino and I still love Merino, but now I've learned about different types of wool. Um, and he came up with Merino Evino and I was like, it rhymes. It combines two things that I enjoy. So let, yeah. let's go with it. Yeah. And then my sister-in-law. Well with the cafe. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I was planning to have a sign like, you know, mistakes are not my fault after like one glass or something. <laughs> but um, yeah, and then my sister-in-law is also an artist and she designed my logo, which was awesome. Oh, nice. Because I can't draw to save my life. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good that you've got connections, though, that way that, you know, because a lot of times, like, I like drawing, but it takes a long time. And mm -hmm. um, I've got my little sister does um a lot of stuff she's got uh she's oh, I can't remember it's a webtoon I, f I forget um it's called finding meaning and so basically she creates like an online comic strip and oh, cool. um so a lot of times I'll ask her for like so which tools should I be using to make this a lot easier and mm -hmm. and uh like last winter I did a um mystery knit along thing and she drew the artwork for it and everything and but she nice. keeps really busy with her webtoon stuff so uh I don't I don't ask her for a whole lot of help with stuff outside of like guide me to the things I need to <laughs> make it easier because yeah but no it's it's really nice having those resources right there that are willing to help and uh answer questions and everything she did a really great job with your logo <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. yeah. No, it's, it's interesting starting a business like you think, oh, yeah, I'm just going to die. <laughs> or I'm just going to design or something. But then you need a logo. It's like, oh, I can't draw. I'm not artistic in that way. Oh, I need this or that. And um, and like, I need to be able to do some accounting, <laughs> another right. aspect of math. And, yep. and so a lot more goes into it. And then you need to like know people. Um, <laughs> yeah. And yeah. And that's, a lot of it is just like making those connections and like I was actually just telling Dan last night uh, I went to a knitting retreat here a couple weeks ago and normally in the marketplace I'm like running around and talking with all the dyers and doing all the things and I'm just not used to peopling as much <laughs> and I was tired <laughs> and so I kind of talked with dyers outside the market and then when the market was actually going on like I helped out in a booth for the morning and then I went to go back in the afternoon and it was kind of like you know I know the dyers I'll catch up with them later I'm real tired <laughs> and so we just kind of hung out and uh had fun seeing what everybody else bought and um it was just it was a different way of experiencing the market but like I told Dan I was like I feel like I did something wrong because I wasn't like going around and like chatting everybody up during the market, but it was also like really, really busy. And so part of me was like, I don't know if the dyers are going to appreciate me going and chatting them up while there's like 8 million customers running around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's something I've noticed after the pandemic being home, like, cause um, as a teacher, our schools closed in March and we didn't go back in person until um, after spring break this March. So it was a full year where, there would be like two weeks where I didn't leave the neighborhood. We would take walks, mm -hmm. but that was it. And yeah. so going back to work, I mean, yeah, I had to wake up a little bit earlier, <laughs> but um, I was surprised at how much more tired I seemed mm -hmm. than before the pandemic started. I'm naturally introverted. <clears throat> I'm pretty shy. Um, this is like actually really <laughs> good medium for me. And as a teacher, I don't know, I just like turn it on and I can mm -hmm. go. But when it comes to meeting new people, um, I, I think I come off as really awkward initially. So um, oh. yeah. I think 
I think everybody has a little bit of that. I know, um, I, again, at the same event, I was talking with um, my friend Lisa. Uh, she does the Paper Daisy Creations designs. And um, she's like super extrovert. And she was just like soaking up all the energy at the whole event. And like, I'm kind of more of an outgoing introvert, like, at the events and stuff and like when I need to be on and being a people person I am but like mm -hmm. that like d is not how I recharge <laughs> like yeah. I need to be at home not talking to people for a while to like boost up my energy again and so like yeah after we get done with the live on here like I'm probably going to spend the next two days not talking to anybody but my family <laughs> <laughs> that sounds awesome <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> and then I saw the pictures you posted <clears throat> before the retreat with all the yarn and the projects you were taking. <laughs> How many of those did you do? None. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I was all excited and brought all the things. I was going to do all the stuff. And then we went to a yarn shop that I'd never been to before, but I'd been to their booth at events um, years previous. And I knew that they carry Jameson and Smith stuff. And so I was really excited about getting some color work things. And we went there like before the retreat, retreat actually even officially started and I got a sweater project <laughs> and I just knit on that all weekend. <laughs> nice. Nice. It was really fun. But yeah, well, let's, uh, it was, it was such a fun <clears throat> retreat and everything. Um, but let's get back to your dying and everything. I watched you, uh, I watched your little video that you had posted on your YouTube channel, um, kind of introducing yourself and giving your fiber background and everything. Um, so anybody that's watching, uh, Lily has a YouTube channel um, where she's got some really fun dyeing videos and stuff like that. Um, and is it just uh, Marino Evino on YouTube? Yeah. Well? Yeah. Perfect. So right now I've been dyeing um, a lot of the Pride and Prejudice Advent colors. Yeah. <clears throat> so those of you who don't know, um, it's actually on sale this month, 10% off. Uh, but Shane and I have been working on this advent. She was the first person I actually approached. And we've never met in person, but I feel like we're already <laughs> friends, which is pretty amazing. Right? <laughs> um, I feel the same way. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but like, as most of you, or all of you probably know, a lot of yarn dyers will do advents um, around the holidays. And um, it's a lot more work than I thought it would be. Um, <laughs> But my favorite book is Pride and Prejudice. And I think if one of my student, former students is still on here, Bashir, um, he knows that I love Pride and Prejudice. I have a picture of Colin Firth and Jennifer Ely in my classroom. Um, I use the first sentence of Pride and Prejudice to teach different parts of speech. And um, yeah, my students, like, if they know one thing about me is that I love Pride and Prejudice. And I guess the well, second thing is that I knit. <laughs> um, that's a great idea to combine the two. And yeah. I'm also a huge Pride and Prejudice fan. It's I don't reread books very often at all, but that one I've read probably five or six times mm -hmm. over the course of all my readings. <laughs> yeah, same here. When I was pregnant with my daughter, my husband read it aloud to my stomach. Oh, nice. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so Pride and Prejudice was published January 28th. And so that's when... Um, my advent is starting and um, we're calling it a surprise box because it's not really the holidays anymore. And then it ends on February 14th. I'm not a huge Valentine's Day fan because, um, gosh, I feel like a lot of things go back to like high school for me, but I never dated in high school. <laughs> so it, it was always a reminder, like, you're alone. And so Aww. I didn't really like Valentine's Day, but I thought, okay, well, every, well, I don't know if everyone loves Mr. Darcy, but <laughs> a lot of the people I know. The poll that I did the other day, pretty much everybody loves Mr. Darcy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I thought, okay, this would be pretty fun. Um, but with Advents, I find like it's hard to know what to do with the mini skeins. And so that's mm -hmm. why I approached Shane and I was like, you know, I want to do this, but I don't want people to be like, okay, I have these mini skeins. What am I going to do? And there are tons of projects on Ravelry that you can use mini skeins for, mm -hmm. and you can do scrappy blankets, but I wanted something special. Um, <laughs> so, um, well, and it's always kind of fun because I know, like, I've gotten advents in the past where, like, like, you get all excited about getting them, and then you're like, now what do I do? And, <laughs> you know, so even, even if they don't, use the specific pattern for that kit because I know I've done that too where like 
I'll get a kit and I'll use the yarns for one thing and then I'll use different yarns for the pattern or whatever. But it's just kind of having that option to springboard off of so that it's not so much overwhelm of like, I have all the pretty yarns and now I'm just going to collect them. <laughs> right, right. So, so yeah, so Shana designed patterns and then um, she put me in touch with Angela, who I think is on here too. <clears throat> and yep. she um, designed a project bag, which is amazing and knew that I love, somehow knew that I loved polka dots. Or maybe it's a <laughs> pride and prejudice thing. I don't know. But she designed this amazing, amazing project bag that's big enough to hold um, the project that Shana is designing for it and all the yarn and um, I'm working with DK Graham to design stitch markers. Um, so yeah, and then another local um, coworker, she's making soap and designing a Mr. Darcy <laughs> scent. <laughs> so That's it's awesome. Gonna, yeah, so it's just going to be really fun um, yeah. because every day there'll be little gifts and yarn and, and then we'll be doing a knit along. So mm -hmm. um, that way people can, you know, get to know each other and share our love of crafting and Pride and Prejudice and Mr. Darcy. We can talk about the adaptations. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. Oh, and I just wanted to point out too, Angela posted, um, mm -hmm. Angela, the bag lady, <laughs> mm -hmm. is crafty like a monkey. Um, I've done different things with her. We've done a couple giveaways um, mm -hmm. on my group and everything and she makes really awesome bags I know I've done posts with her bags quite a bit um I think it was last year I think it was either splash pad no it was uh the pigskin party that um Boston Jen hosts I had done a giveaway with um some little stitch markers I made and some local alpaca yarn and a cute little um Christmas cactus project bag from Angela um, and so, yeah, she makes the cutest bags and I don't know where she finds her fabric, but, um, yeah. and I know she posted a spoiler of the bag fabric a while back and it was yeah. so cute. Yeah, I actually have so, it right here and she does have so many cute bags. Like I, my husband would totally put me in the dog house if, uh, <laughs> I bought as many bags as I wanted, but right. I mean, this is just perfect. I love purple and lavender and like it just captures a the quaint English town and it has two people walking that could be Darcy and Elizabeth. Yeah. So, um, oh, and there's even so a church cute. that's like in the English style. Mm -hmm. So it's just, it's perfect. Yeah. Um, and she oh, had I, know, other... I was so excited when I saw her posting that I was like, Oh, that's so cute. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And she found other fabrics that would have also been perfect. I, I was so tempted to be like, I kind of want all of them. <laughs> 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 Angela probably would have made all of them like I don't know how she makes all the bags that she makes like yeah I'm I'm very intimidated by my sewing machine so like people who make bags and like make a lot of them like I just I don't understand it's like magic to me <laughs> yeah I don't even know how to use a sewing machine that just seems kind of like a magical contraption like right. how does it go like this? I don't know <laughs> right like I've um I have a sewing machine and I sewed at one point, but I did something to my machine where I broke it and it only sewed backwards. And like all of my friends in my knitting group that like did a lot of quilting, um, they took a look at it because they're like, oh, I'm sure we can fix it. They all took a look at it and they're like, I don't know what you did. This is not fixable. <laughs> oh no. And <laughs> so when we moved, I got rid of that one and then we moved again and I got a new one thinking like I'm gonna do it this time and I don't think I have ever actually used it oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, scared I'm gonna break it again yeah. but oh and okay. Angela said since it's shark week next week she's getting a bunch of shark bags loaded up to the shop so crafty like a monkey guys go check out her bags <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah um getting back to the yarn I actually have all of the yarn laid out in front of me um for the surprise box um because I always feel like I have to kind of explain my process because a lot of designers that I know will knit up the thing and then write the pattern either as they're knitting it or afterwards and um I tend to just like do my swatch and write up the whole pattern and then go through and knit the stuff 
Wow. Um, and it, it works a lot better for me because otherwise I get myself all confused about what I did in different areas. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Whereas if I write it up ahead of time, I can make little tweaks as I'm going through, but usually it's pretty much set and I can send it off to my editor and my test knitters and have it rolling that way while I knit through the sample. Um, but yeah, and so I have like everything laid out in front of me, like in the, in the order that everybody will be opening stuff up yeah. and it's very pretty. I'm very yeah. excited. <laughs> yeah. Well, and when I designed um, the yarn for it, I rewatched the 1995 VPC version because I love Colin Firth. My students have asked me, like, if you could marry him, would you? And it's like, well, him is Darcy, yes. But luckily, he's a fictional <laughs> character, so my husband right. is safe. Like, he doesn't feel threatened by a fictional <laughs> character, which is yep. good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we watched it um, in February, which we like to do. Um, and I'm really lucky that my husband will actually go with it and, <laughs> and watch Pride and Prejudice. Cause it's yeah, my husband will. <laughs> yeah, it's a big my time My husband's commitment. like, no, you watch that while I'm sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> well, he is watching, like, he kind of watches a video game at the same time. So, but oh, okay, nice. he's there. Um, <laughs> and so as I watched, and my, I have to edit some of the pictures because my daughter, <clears throat> you know, was, like, pointing at the screen for some of it. But uh, I took pictures of all of the different outfits that each character wore. And then I came up with um, what colors um, characters had in common. So for instance, all the Bennett sisters and their parents have to be able to go together, like color wise, mm -hmm. because they're related. And, but to complicate it further, like Lydia had to match Wickham and Jane had to match Bingley, Elizabeth with Darcy. And then he also had to m match his sister. Uh, so, um, so that was another factor when I was designing these mini skeins is um, not only did I want them to go together in a project, which means some of the, like a lot of the colors go together, but there's, it's not like it's all one color, just so you <laughs> don't freak out, but <laughs> they had to complement each other and, um, and the, the name, the colors had to make sense. Like, so it was a little bit more complicated with that, especially because Mr. Bennett doesn't wear any colors that the rest of his family wears. Mrs. <laughs> Bennett was kind of complicated too. <laughs> but, um, I can see I mean, that. <laughs> I think you did a really good job though, like looking at the layout and like knowing who, which one is which person and everything. Like, I don't know, it just, it makes me really happy because you did a really good job of getting them to all be close but still keeping them separate and kind of um i don't know kind of having their personality a little bit coming through with it without being like a stark um contrast or things like like you know without making it look like this is obviously the you know um i don't know this you, you did a good job I'm getting all my Thanks. words muddled. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. Thanks. Yeah, it was fun to design. And now I'm thinking, I don't know if I'll do this next year or not. It, hopefully, you know, people are snapping up the Pride and Prejudice Advents, um, you know, this month because it's a good deal. Um, but I would love to do Pole Dark because I did um, enjoy that series a lot. And I read all the books, which I think took me two years. There's 12 books. And they get longer and longer, as Winston Graham wrote. Um, but I, I love that series, too. And I don't know if Dyer's died up pole dark because I wasn't on Instagram back then. <laughs> I've seen a couple Dyer's who have pole dark stuff. I actually have not watched or read any pole dark. I it's need okay. to because, like, clearly me and you kind of are on the same wavelength for books and stuff. And the other dyers that I've seen things from Poldark, um, I can't remember who it is. There was one dyer where it was a new to me dyer. And as I was looking through their shop, like everything that I clicked on that I was like, ooh, this is pretty, was something from their Poldark series. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, but yeah, it's, I haven't seen a ton of Poldark, but um, I have seen a few dyers do things, but um, I haven't in a while. And so, yeah, fun. yeah. I mean, and I loved Bridgerton, but a ton of dyers did Bridgerton, and yep. those colors, understandably, were so bright. And I'm like, well, I feel like it's all been done. So, <laughs> yeah, 
And and that's kind of where like it's easy to get in that mentality as a dyer or a designer where like you feel like, well, I can't design this thing because somebody's already done it. But I kind of try to keep thinking um, back to like, um, I don't know if you're familiar with Elizabeth Zimmerman. Um, mm. Yeah, like, so she's always, she always said that you were uninventing something because like you thought you came up with something original and in reality somebody else has already done it. Um, pretty much everything has already been done at some point, but you haven't done it and you have a different perspective and a different spin on how it should happen. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of what I keep in mind because like um, with designs, like there's actually uh, one of the socks that was released this year as part of the Indie Sock Along. I noticed that like the same stitch pattern started popping up in like all these other sock patterns that were released around the same time. And it kind of entertained me. I was also kind of like, well, apparently everybody likes this pattern. <laughs> um, but each one, even though it was the same stitch pattern, and I know which book they got it out of, um, it was a slightly different variation in every pattern that I saw. And mm -hmm. so, you know, even though we're all obviously pulling from the exact same stitch dictionary, um, <laughs> we all had a different vision for how that stitch pattern could be turned into socks. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's kind of the same thing with dyeing and everything, even though, like you said, like every dyer under the sun was doing stuff with Bridgerton. <laughs> yep. Yeah. It's, but you also, you know, you kind of just have to pick, like, which things you're going to jump on. And I know, um, I think at that time, you were kind of just starting to talk to us about the uh, Pride and Prejudice set and everything. And um, I think that that's, I think that that's a good way to go, where it's kind of along a similar vein. But it, since it's a year out, it's not going to be like, hey, remember this thing from last year that you guys all loved? Right. <clears throat> you know, because yeah. Jane Austen is pretty classic. I don't think she's going to go out of style anytime soon. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I jumped on her bandwagon early because I watched it with my parents when I was, I think, in elementary school when it came out. Mm -hmm. And uh, granted, I'm sure she was, you know, extremely popular, <laughs> like, <laughs> way before then. But uh, yeah, I've always been a fan of that adaptation. And mm -hmm. I think I read Pride and Prejudice the first time when I was in eighth grade. And um, didn't of course appreciate it as much as I appreciate it now, but I yeah. don't know that that book shaped <laughs> like my college degree. You know? <laughs> like I went into English like basically because of 19th century literature, which I don't think I would have gotten into if I hadn't read Jane Austen and then mm -hmm. branched out to the Brontes and et cetera, yep. which is it's kind of incredible that one book is like shaped like my career basically <laughs> yeah well and that's so. that's what's kind of magical about reading though you know you never know what's going to impact you when you pick up a book mm -hmm. you know I know uh I will not be able to recite it but um when I was in grade school one of my mom's relatives gave me a Shel Silverstein book and I started collecting like all the Shel Silverstein poem collections and books and everything and absolutely loved them um and recently I've had one of his poems kind of going through my head on repeat um and I like I said I don't know the exact thing but basically it's like the woulda coulda shouldas um uh -huh. the it's it's like all the woulda coulda shouldas were getting together and worrying about something and then they all were scared of the um of the one did so kind of that whole idea of you know instead of regretting or worrying about things that you could have done or changed or done differently or whatever just taking and doing something mm -hmm. you know is more powerful than worrying about all the things that you didn't do yeah and, and I feel like that like captures Marino Ivino in many ways because like I know four years ago, I started an Etsy store trying to sell what I was knitting and didn't go too well. <laughs> I didn't really know like about marketing or anything back then. And I don't know what it was about last year, but um, 
you know, I had been seeing a lot about yarn dyeing and, um, and I started volunteering for the Flag Staff Woolen Fiber Festival and um, Andrea, who um, is kind of in charge of that, she uh, um, was like, oh, yarn dyeing so easy. You just get Kool-Aid and some yarn and bingo, you have it. And I was like, it can't be that easy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but at a very basic level, like it is, it has the mm -hmm. citric acid in it. So all you need is like a pot and that and some yarn. Um, yeah. Of course, the way I dye with acid dyes, you need separate equipment from your food. So, it, yeah. you know, yep. it's a little bit more complicated. And But even with Kool-Aid, you can do a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and so, but I don't know what happened when I just started yarn dyeing. I was like, this is so much fun. And since I can't draw or paint, like it's a way for me to experiment with colors mm -hmm. um, and show that side, but definitely more of a, like an abstract way. <laughs> Um, Which is yeah. kind of almost more freeing. I know mm -hmm. I did a lot of art classes uh, when I was in high school. That was like my favorite thing. And we always had like, for a couple weeks, we would work in this medium for a couple weeks, we'd work in this medium. And every single year, um, we had a clay section. And I'm the worst at clay. Like, I don't mind it. It doesn't inspire me. I don't like it's not my thing. <laughs> and uh, I had the same teacher every year through high school. And every year when we had the clay projects, like we had different types of clay projects that we had to do. And every year I would just make these weird abstract sculpture things because I was just making shapes with the clay and attaching it to itself. And uh, by the last year of high school, <laughs> when we claimed, when we came to the clay section, she was like, just so you know, you don't have to do this one. I know you don't want this one. How about we do this instead? And at the time I was making like these altered t-shirt design things. And so she was like, how about you make me a couple of these shirts and we'll call it good. <laughs> nice. and, Cause you know, kind of like you said, like doing the abstract thing is kind of almost easier because it relieves a lot of the pressure of like, because I knew I wasn't going to make anything beautiful with clay, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but by doing just kind of like playing with it and making just weird shapes and things like that, it was, it was enjoyable. Um, it is not something I would go pick up on my own, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah but yeah no I can I can see how doing the yarn dyeing would be just kind of freeing and fun and uh, a lot a lot more enjoyable way to play with color when you know you don't feel comfortable doing the sketching or the sculpting or you know different things like that yeah and I feel like there's always something to learn there's different mm -hmm. there's like so many different techniques um you know even just the water level um how does that affect the speckles how does that affect you know, what's going on under the, beneath the yarn. Mm -hmm. And um, I, you know, it's, it, it, if you mess up, <laughs> it can be expensive to just keep buying yarn. And so I try not, I mean, I'm sure all yarn dyes try not to mess up, mm -hmm. but uh, it's, it's kind of scary each time because you're like, oh, okay, like, is this going to go right? Is it not what's going on underneath the yarn? Um, and so I love the fact that I can always learn. I can always experiment. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just try out different colors, make my own colors from the dyes that I have. Um, yeah, and so, and it, it's a lot of waiting too, and like mm -hmm. also experimenting with heat and how much acid and even the water source can <laughs> affect the colors. Yes. Yeah. So, um, so it's, it's, it's fun, mm -hmm. um, but it's also kind of scary. <laughs> and, I can uh, see that. Yeah. I, I was going to tell you, I really, I watched the um, video you had posted a few months back um, when you were just kind of playing with all the different blue dyes mm -hmm. and everything. That was a fun one to watch because I loved how just chill you were about everything. We're like, eh, we'll add a little of this maybe, <laughs> maybe a little bit more. Yeah, we'll do some of this one. Like, yeah. it, was, it was just kind of fun to watch your process as you were going through just kind of experimenting and playing with the different colors that you had on hand and everything yeah. that way yeah and that one I think was where I learned that delphinium blue looks purple without heat and then once it cooks it gets bluer mm -hmm. um, which is really cool um, yeah. but it's also kind of a complicated color to work with <laughs> <laughs> right so. but yeah it's it's just been a blast doing this and with my yarn store eventually which I don't know 
<laughs> when I'll be able to open a brick and mortar store. Hopefully there won't be any more pandemics in our lifetime. I feel like <laughs> right. once every hundred years is good. Although I know scientists are already gearing up for the next one. Ugh. Um, but, uh, <laughs> I would love for that store just to sell like different indie dyers too um, yeah. and designers so that, I mean, Flagstaff, we have one yarn store or one um, local yarn store, mm -hmm. um, but there are so many different dyers and like even commercial yarns out there that you can have, you mm -hmm. know, in a town of 60,000, two yarn stores and not step on each other's toes. Yeah. Um, well, and especially like with your idea of having a kind of be a cafe slash yarn store, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and I know when we lived down in Phoenix, because we lived in oh, wow. Glendale, and uh, we were there for, I think, just around two years. Um, I kind of struggled when we were down there because, like, the yarn shop that we had up here um, was the shop that, like, I learned how to knit through them, and I went every week, and we had a, a group, like, I there was a group that I went to like three or four times a week. There was always like all these different yarn groups that mm -hmm. I could go to. And so I had like this really like close knit knitting community up here. And then we moved down there and I was like, oh, well, there's a yarn shop in Glendale. We lived down there for two years. I was never able to catch that shop open. I don't know how they stayed in business. Wow. I don't know if they're still in business, but... <laughs> I ended up driving all the way out to um, Tempe, to mm -hmm. Tempe Yarn and Fiber um, yeah. a couple times while we were down there. And that was a really nice shop. Um, I got to take a class with Kat Bordy when I was there, and that was absolutely wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, it was like one of my favorite knitting experiences, because um, she was just so sweet and fun and just a really, really good teacher. Um, and the whole shop was just really welcoming and nice and um, it was bright and, you know, it just, it felt nice going in there. Um, and then there were a couple other yarn shops that I visited mm -hmm. that some of them were good. Some of them, um, I felt like I was intruding. Oh. <laughs> and so I was kind of like, okay, well, this was, this was a place. I'm probably not coming back here. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. Um, like, like. I mean, I, I'm new to the, you know, business aspect of the knitting or crafting community. And so I've heard people say like, oh yeah, I haven't been welcome in certain yarn stores or it, it didn't feel warm. Um, and it dismays me. Like I shouldn't say it, surprise, right. it surprises me because like we're all human and in businesses, like, mm -hmm. but still like, I feel like the crafting community should be above all that. Right. Um, well, and I, um, and I kind of wonder too, like, because I know some stores get where like, they have their core group, and they kind of forget that new people aren't part of the core group and may not know where everything is, or they, you know, may have questions or whatever, because um, there have been other parts of the country too, where I've gone to yarn shops, um, one or two that were like really big name yarn shops, and mm -hmm like literally walked around for like two hours checking things out trying to decide on projects and looking at everything and nobody talked to me the whole time I was in there wow and right and like um I've worked a lot of retail I love working retail and something like that like it instantly like really gets under my skin because I'm like you should at least say hi to people when they come in your shop like I get that you're busy but you know Right. This was part of it. And uh, the one that I'm thinking of in particular, they weren't that busy. They were just all busy talking amongst themselves behind the counter, which made oh. me even more irritated. But yeah. yeah. Um, but there are a lot of really great yarn shops out there, too, that, you know, you walk in and you immediately feel like at home and like you can shop around and chat with everybody and you know, and those are the kind of yarn shops that I think are the ones that even with the pandemic, you know, mm -hmm. held on and um, found ways to make it where their community was still thriving and, um, you know, excited and everything. And I kind of feel like um, the idea that you have for the yarn cafe would be more in that line because you're intentionally making it like a cozy atmosphere to people come and ha have people come and hang out and 
work mm -hmm. on stuff and um especially like you had said highlighting a lot of the Arizona products too yep. which mm -hmm. I think that that's really really awesome because uh that is one thing like um uh you guys have a lot of alpaca down there right is it yeah Alabama? yeah actually um in Prescott which is kind of between Phoenix and Flagstaff um mm -hmm. and I was I think it was through the Flagstaff Woolen Fiber Festival that I learned about Peaceful Prairie Alpaca Ranch. And I just messaged Wendy and she, you know, let us come down. It wasn't even during like, she doesn't have like tour hours or come visit mm -hmm. the ranch hours. It's just like, you want to come and she has a little shop and I know she does like a weekend market. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, it was just so fun to see her alpacas and my daughter loved it. Um, so we, we go back every year. Um, nice. And, yeah, and whenever she has extra yarn that I can dye, I buy some. And, um, oh, that's so I can awesome. Have Arizona line. But I'd yeah. love to get a yarn crawl going in Arizona. I first learned about that, gosh, like four or five years ago when we were in Portland. And um, I went to a bunch of yarn stores up there. And I think there's another one in Nevada. I think, I think there's yarn crawls mm -hmm. pretty much everywhere now, but not in Arizona. Because <laughs> um, in Tucson, like, yeah. we had, I think, three yarn stores. And now I can only think of two, unfortunately, um, Birdhouse and Grandma Spinning Wheel, and both are amazing. Um, and so I, that would be another thing I would like to get started up here is to do a yarn crawl. Um, yeah, that would like be really maybe fun. Like maybe in July or, I don't know, it might be too hot in July. <laughs> but I know <laughs> those are slow times for uh, knitters, at least in Arizona, because mm -hmm. like who really wants to be working on a blanket like right in July <laughs> when it's like 110 in Phoenix and Tucson and yeah, even right. in Flagstaff like we don't have AC up here and so when it's 85 it's pretty hot um so yeah <laughs> but yeah. a yarn call would be so much fun um yeah so. well I know um Minnesota has like a really really cool one um and Colorado has I think two different ones mm -hmm. um from what I've heard from um different friends who live out there and um but yeah I think you guys have so many different yarn shops down there that that would be really fun because kind of um I've only kind of participated in bits and pieces of one because I wasn't able to make um the whole circuit mm -hmm. but um kind of the fun thing about doing the yarn crawls is you get to kind of see the different personality of each store and it's it's always kind of fun because you know you get to meet a whole bunch of new people in a short amount of time and uh really experience a whole bunch of different places that you know it's it's easy for us to always just go back to our same place over and over again but by getting to jump around to the different places you know you get to see what yarns this one carries that that one mm -hmm. doesn't and um, and then just meeting the owners and kind of getting the vibe of the place. I know there've been a couple mm -hmm. different, um, shops that were part of a yarn crawl that I didn't even realize were there until I saw them on the yarn crawl listing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, we just kind of went through and hit a few of them. And some of them are ones that I go back to over and over, but like just driving past or just like looking at them online, I probably wouldn't have been like, oh, yeah, let's go look at that place. Because, you know, some of them are very unassuming from the front. And then you go inside and you're like, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you yeah. know? Yeah, and you can pick up new project ideas, learn new yeah. things. Um, I, when I, my grandmother used to live in San Francisco. And um, there's a yarn store there called Imagine It, which I, I love the puns. Like, right? just, that name is amazing. <laughs> And it looks like it's going to be really small and especially with the cost of real estate in San Francisco right. and you go in and it's just like goes straight back. And then there's another like area that also goes straight back. And I think that's the first time I ever saw a knitting machine. Um, and the people were super friendly and the yarn just went like 10 feet or 12 feet high. I don't know how high it went. And luckily like they had people working there who <laughs> could reach the yarn for me because I'm pretty short, <laughs> but that was like such a cool experience. And then mm -hmm. when my husband and I were dating, um, I took him to San Francisco to meet my grandmother and <laughs> I made him go. <laughs> good, good. You have to go to this yarn <laughs> store. The name is great. It's beautiful inside. And, um, and nice. again, like that's another, uh, like, I guess 
something that the spouses of us crafters have to deal with. It's like every time we go on vacation, it's like, okay, which hair stores, which yep. farms are we going to go to? <laughs> like, well, I have to go to this one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Those, uh, at first, when I started going to a bunch of different events and stuff, it was kind of like, this is my thing. Because Dan was like, whatever, I don't want to be part of your yarn weirdness. And, <laughs> <laughs> and but over the years, he's kind of like, okay, so what yarn store is in this weird town that you're making us go to today? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, well, it just happens to have this shop, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so it's, it's kind of fun. Because, like, even uh, Cairo, he, he's uh, seven and a half, and he sometimes will be a little irritated if he's been in the car too long, but even he likes going into the different shops and like mm -hmm. squishing the yarn and seeing all the colors. And um, yep. he has recently requested a sweater with a C on it for his name. Nice. <laughs> so yeah. we'll see, we'll see if that gets done, but. <laughs> yeah, and every time I pick up the socks from the Indie Sock Along, my daughter's like, socks for me? I'm like, no, <laughs> they're a little too big. So, but she, she loves um, hand knit socks because when I was um, knitting up your vanilla socks, they were for her. Her feet have since grown, unfortunately. But yep. so now she's like, oh, I want more socks. And then my husband, um, I, he has trouble sleeping. And so I heard that merino wool can help people sleep at night because he doesn't want to take medication or anything like oh, that. Okay. And his favorite color is purple. So I dyed up oh, um, nice. some purple for him and uh, caked pretty. it up and I'm knitting a blanket, which it's too hot for right now, but um, <laughs> ho hopefully that'll help him sleep. Uh, yeah. We'll see. But yeah, he likes feeling the yarn. I've yet to knit him a sweater. I'm still afraid of the boyfriend curse, even though we're married <laughs> right. now. <laughs> but um, uh, I think Dan has gotten a hat and one pair of socks. I think that is all I've ever made him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I've made my husband, I think, two hats, two pairs of socks, and a scarf. <laughs> so yeah <laughs> whoops yeah but they, um they, they get to be around us while we're being creative making things <laughs> yeah yeah and meanwhile my daughter's like I want all the socks yeah <laughs> it's like okay well this is good right um, Cairo yeah. does really like hand knit socks too uh mm -hmm. during the summer he's been very excited because he discovered flip-flops this year so there have been no socks this year um but uh last year and all the years before he insisted on wearing like they weren't crocs they're were, like the sandals that um have like kind of a closed toe mm -hmm. i don't know they're they're like a mixture of sandals and shoes i and, think i know what you're talking about yeah because he insisted on wearing socks every day even in the summer and so he was even wearing hand knit socks through the summer and everything before but now he's very into flip-flops, so there are no summer socks this year for him. <laughs> oh. Yeah, my husband will wear socks with flip-flops, but he's like, I'm married, I don't need to impress anyone. <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's a good attitude. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, Dan uh, wears his socks that I made him at nights when he's trying to get cold. He'll wear, like, uh, pajama shorts and then mm -hmm. hand-knit socks because he's cold and sitting by the vent. <laughs> <laughs> yep, my husband wears socks when he sleeps too, and he wears the ones that I knit, uh, which also have merino wool. So, he's make they're maybe helping. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So, oh, I'm, I was just reading. Uh, yeah, I want to uh, know what yarn store that is. Yeah, mammoths live thirty minutes from a mammoth store of a major fine yarn producer. They have amazing stuff for low prices. I knit in cashmere now. Uh, yeah. That sounds amazing. <laughs> yeah, I have a few skeins of a merino nylon cashmere um, blend. And we'll see, like, if people like it, <clears throat> then I'll, <clears throat> excuse me, I'll buy more of that base because mm -hmm. it's so soft to work with. And because I knit a pair of, I think I knit April socks in that. Um, oh, nice. And I sent those to my friend who's in Germany right now. And, uh, but yeah, oh, I mean, it's just... That's really sweet. Those socks were intense. <laughs> yeah, they they were. Yeah, well, that's another thing for those of you who, you know, don't know, but Shana does the indie sock along, and um, which is why we're here. <laughs> so maybe you do know. <laughs> We've been busy talking about, like, everything. Yeah. Um, and before, um, before 
well, last year she was looking for indie dyers, which is how we got in touch. And that's the yarn that I dyed for this month. And before I started doing this indie sock along, I had knit two pairs of socks. And one was like a vanilla pair for my husband that I totally butchered the sizing on. And But he wears them to sleep, so that's sweet. <laughs> um, At least they're getting used. <laughs> yeah. And then I knit one pair for myself. <clears throat> that's a color pattern. But now I'm too scared to wear them because I don't want to like ruin them, which it's like, okay, you should just wear them. Like they fit perfectly. So surprisingly, <laughs> I got my, <laughs> yeah, surprisingly <laughs> they fit my first pair of socks. And nice. so, um, so yeah, when I heard about the Indie Sock Log and Shana picked me, thank you, by the way. <laughs> um, yeah, I was so excited because I never know <laughs> like if these ideas that I have are going to be something that other people are also interested in. Mm hmm and so, and sourcing dyers for um, yarn stuff, especially when it's something like this, where it's like, I'm not going to tell you what the stuff is. It's just going to be this kind of theme. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, having people who believe that it's going to be good, <laughs> even mm -hmm. when it's just kind of like the spark of an idea is really, really um, amazing and helpful. And like, yeah, I was so glad when you were, uh, reached out to me that you know you were like hey this sounds fun yeah and I had no idea like if you pick me or what so <clears throat> when you selected me for July I was super excited I was like yay I'm making a connection and this is gonna be fun and I was like okay now I have to knit all the socks I'm like oh gosh <laughs> like the socks require like you, you need a good gauge for socks because if you don't like they'll be too small or too big and so like that was intimidating um, and so I knit the vanilla socks and then um, just kind of took off after that. And what's great about these patterns, um, and I've mentioned this to Shana before, is like you learn, like obviously there's different stitches each month, but there's, mm -hmm. you learn something new about sock knitting each month too. And so I'm feeling a lot more confident. And the vanilla socks have like the slip stitch heel or whatever. Um, oh, yeah. Yep. The um, heel flap where it's the slip stitch to reinforce <clears throat> the heel flap. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this is easy. I'll do it. And then for it, these socks, there's um, German short row. And, <laughs> and I was like, oh, gosh. <laughs> but she also has <laughs> tutorials. And now I'm just like, why would anyone do anything except the German short row? <laughs> right. And, and I kind of want to do like the butterfly shawl that everyone was doing last year. And I'm like, can oh, I use sure. German short rows for that? Is, are those, or, she, or, or does that pattern do the wrap in turn? Which I always forget to pick up the stupid wrap for that type of short row. Do you want a little hint? Cause you're talking about, is it the papillon or something like mm -hmm. that? Yep. Um, with that one, I'm pretty certain that that one is garter stitch. You can mm -hmm. do a wrap and turn and then just not pick up the wrap because it gets <sighs> hidden inside the garter stitch sweet because I'm pretty good at picking it up on the right side because I can see the wrap but on right. the whole side oh my goodness <laughs> right um, I yeah like... no with that one anytime you have short rows and garter stitch just do a quick wrap and turn and then don't even bother picking it up because it serves its purpose and it just gets hidden anyways oh good because I <laughs> I would love to like make my own kit for that you know yeah um, that yeah it's a arm. gorgeous shawl <clears throat> but um but yeah, everyone says like the short rows, like there's so many of them, you get so sick of them. I was like, well, I like the German short rows. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> so. Well, and honestly, that's one of the reasons I haven't made one of those. Um, one mm -hmm. of the gals here in town made one and like, I love the pattern. I personally like, I get real sick of the short rows real fast. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so that's why, like, I'll look at it and be like, oh, it's so pretty. I actually have yarn for it that I bought, like, a while ago. And I've never cast it on because every time I look at the pattern, I'm like, oh, I'm going to die before I finish this. <laughs> 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 but it is beautiful. And I have seen a lot of really, really pretty versions. And I think she has, um, I can't remember if it's a cowl. Or something. She's oh, released yeah. something else with kind of that same motif and that same um, styling and everything that isn't quite as big as the full out shawl. Mm -hmm. um, and so I've kind of considered that, but the shawl is really cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there's, there's that, like, can I get through the short rows to get to the shawl? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. And that, I mean, I just gave birth to my second child like two weeks ago, so I don't know 
like when I'll be able to sit in a knitting community again, because mm -hmm. I'll feel guilty, like, okay, like, I'm a teacher, so <laughs> I don't watch the kids. And then, like, to spend a few hours away, like, I feel kind of bad. So maybe in a few years, I'll be able to join a knitting circle, because I feel like that would be a good way to knit that shawl, mm -hmm. um, when you yeah. have people around you, and you can kind of chat and mm -hmm. um, not <laughs> focus on the short rows. Um, <laughs> yeah, <but. laughs> that's, that's a really good point. I know, um, if you're ever interested, the zombie um, mm -hmm. knitting group that I'm in, uh, you can join that at any time, I think. Um, and we do, um, there's weekly Zooms, but then there's also one free monthly Zoom. And, okay. and that's, it's a really nice, fun group. And everybody just kind of sits around and chats. And um, it's kind of nice because even though like the Wednesday chat starts at like seven o'clock central, people mm -hmm. are on until like two, mm -hmm. three in the morning. <laughs> Well, I could so, definitely do that. <laughs> right? And, and so a lot of times, like, I'll do all the stuff with my family after work and do dinner and get Cairo in bed and all the things. And then once everything's kind of quieted down at the house, I'll hop on for like an hour or two. And mm -hmm. I, I miss seeing some of my friends who are on earlier. They're on like East Coast time. But at least I get to see, you know, some of my friends and I get a little bit of a breather to hang out and talk and everything. Yeah. And, yeah. I would definitely do that. Thank you, Angela, by the yeah. way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it can be a nice little break away from baby. And, and it's easy, like, if he wakes up and needs something, it's easy to just quick mute yourself and step away. And yeah, um, every, people do that all the time in the, in the chat, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Oh, and uh, uh, Angela is saying congrats on the baby. And I know I messaged you and congratulated yeah. you, too. He's so cute. Thank you. Yeah, he's, yeah. I don't know if he's more relaxed than my daughter or if I'm just more relaxed having a second one and I know kind of what's going on um, mm. or if my milk supply is better. I think my milk supply is better, which I think definitely helps. But um, yeah. yeah, it's just a lot easier this time and he sleeps a lot better. So oh, good. knock on wood, it doesn't change. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I think oh. I do think that there's a lot to be said for like when mom is more calm and feels more at mm -hmm. ease I feel like the baby's a lot more calm and at ease yeah. you know and and I think you know getting to the second baby is a lot easier than the first one where you're so like nervous about all the things <laughs> yeah. and you don't know what's gonna happen and like uh, mm -hmm. for me we've only got the one but I was kind of a nervous wreck up until like the last month or so mm -hmm. and then like I still was kind of nervous, but also was kind of at the point where I'm like, you know what, he's gonna be born soon. So I just need to calm down and, um, and tried to just make everything as um, like, unstressful as I possibly could, because um, I've got a lot of younger siblings and helped mm -hmm. out with kids at my grandma's daycare all growing up and oh, wow. everything. And so like, the whole like having the baby actually at home didn't bother me at all like I was completely comfortable with that um it was just like the whole like leading up to having him because I was working um as a merch manager at Barnes mm -hmm. and Noble so like my job was literally just moving heavy stacks of books across the <sighs> store and setting up new displays <laughs> Oh, man. And so thankfully, um, my manager at the time and some of the other um, people that worked with me had a lot of kids and um, were guys that were like very much kind of keeping an eye on me. And they're like, if if it seemed like I was overdoing it, they're like, I'm just going to do this for you. You go do something else. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and so that was kind of nice. And uh, my son was born in December. So like as we were getting through like into the Christmas season with everything, um, I kind of, my job just kind of shifted less from setting the displays myself to more of like telling people what to do and managing the lines. <laughs> nice. And yeah, yeah. And so it was a lot easier for me to kind of just focus on like, okay, we're just going to try to de-stress a little so that it's not so chaotic <laughs> yeah. with everything. And uh, I probably will not have any more kids just because I didn't like being pregnant. <laughs> I forgot but, how much I disliked being pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. that that happens. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
<laughs> yeah, I like feeling movement, but not enough to get pregnant again for nine months. Yeah. <laughs> so um, right, yeah. I'll probably be one of those women who sees pre pregnant women be like, Oh, you know, is your baby moving? Can I please touch your stomach? Although I know it just feels kind of like gas bubbles, like <laughs> as crude as that sounds. But um, no, we're, we're, we're done. <laughs> um, yeah. Ideally, like, um, yeah, like we wanted like when I think on our first date, we said we wanted two kids, ideally a girl and a boy. Um, and when I was pregnant with Antonio, who was just born, I could have sworn he was a girl because I had such bad morning sickness. And we were both happy to have two girls. And then when we found out he was a boy, we we're like, oh, well, this is awesome. Like, you know, we got what we wanted, a boy and a girl. Like, how yeah. often does that happen? So, um, yeah, so we're really excited. And yeah, that is super <laughs> exciting. I'm really happy for you. I loved seeing the baby pictures. Oh, thanks. Like, I love little babies. And like I said, if it did not involve me being pregnant, I'd be fine with having multiple babies. But mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> I hear you. Yeah, every once in a while, I'll be like, Oh, Dan, maybe and he's like, No, I'm not dealing with you being pregnant again. That was <laughs> and yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. and and then he kind of reminds me of some of the things where I'm like oh yeah that was horrible I don't want that <laughs> <laughs> yep yeah and then this time I had after pains um when I was nursing one night and they were so intense I was like tempted to go to the hospital and get an epidural like it was really bad because I was oh, like oh God. this labor and delivery was so much easier like you know I could have a third and after that I was like nope nope I'm done. <laughs> this is we are done. <laughs> like, and it was only 40 minutes, but I'm like, no, can't do that again. So, yeah. 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 Well, I'm glad that you've got him and that everybody is safe at home and kind of yes. getting into the routine and that, you know, he's being such a good baby for you. <laughs> yeah. And unfortunately, I probably have to get going because my husband has to work. He owns his own company. Oh, and so, he works that's, on the weekend, but gotcha. That's Dan works retail, so a lot of times he's working Saturdays too. So yeah, no problem. Well, before you go, I just wanted to show everybody really quick so that they know, because um, I've been talking up your sparkle. Mm -hmm. uh, do you guys mm -hmm. see that crazy amount of sparkle in these socks? Like I'm so excited. Uh, Jen is in the chat right now and she's the one who knit my samples for me this month because I was a little bit overwhelmed with all the things that I had going on so she helped me out by knitting these up and both of us were like just so impressed with the amount of sparkle that you kept on the yarn. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. they look amazing. I can't wait to cast them on. <laughs> uh, thank you. Yeah, Jen says it's the best sparkle she's ever seen. And like Thank the so people much. that we kind of were showing at ZK when we were at the retreat, um, everybody was like, oh my gosh, look at that. <laughs> like, look at that. It's like a disco ball of yarn. It looks like I have a filter on the camera. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Yeah. yeah. And right now, all of my fingering weight yarn ships free um, this month. And you know, if you guys are looking for a specific color, I can dye that up. Then it would probably take a week to get to you um, just for drying time and stuff. But um, yeah, so if you're looking for a specific nice. color, I have um, the teal and then the green is a little bit darker. You can kind of see. <laughs> and then because it's hot as Hades in Arizona, <laughs> something that is reminiscent of the heat. And all of them have the sparkle, which, you know, this one, oh, it's so I guess pretty. the lighting's not as good in my location so you can't see it as much but it's there um yeah. which you know that might make you feel like you're actually on fire in Arizona so I don't know <laughs> well, I think that that's the one Jen said that she actually after she knit up these socks um she ordered some yarn from you to to uh for mm -hmm. herself and I think that the um red and orange one yeah is the one that she got yeah thank you yeah 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 and that's so so generous of you to do the 10 percent off on the subscription or the um surprise box and mm -hmm. the free shipping on the fingering weight yeah, and thanks. if people are wondering um and then I'll let you go here since they're shorty socks this is the um I think of the adult small and there's still 60 grams of yarn left over so you can easily get two pairs of socks out of one ball um and since it's kids through adult sizes on the socks can have mommy and me socks okay <laughs> 
Yeah. But but yeah, I just I wanted to thank you so much for doing the live with me. Of and course, thank you. For providing the yarn and partnering with me on the Indie Sack Long and on the Pride and Prejudice subscription. Or not, I keep saying it's a, yeah. surprise. <laughs> yeah, thank you. And, you know, for those of you watching, like Indie Sock Long is still a discount. So mm -hmm. the prices are amazing to get all these sock patterns. And there's tutorials yeah. on Shana's website as well. So I would highly recommend it. Um, thank you. Yeah, it's it's been fun. I'm I'm really excited about it. And uh, next year, I'm already planning on things for next year with it too. So yeah, I'd well, love to participate. People... <laughs> Yay! Hey, thanks. But yeah, <laughs> if anybody's interested, the socks are um, El Verano socks, and they've got little lace pattern and little twisted rib and. It's seven dollars for the individual pattern, or fourteen dollars for all sixteen patterns that we've done this year. And so, the bundle is a lot better deal. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but but yeah, and that's over at yumiyarns.com, and Marino Evino has her Etsy shop, um, and it's just Etsy.com/slash Marino Evino. Yeah, right. And you can find it in my um. Oh yeah, links. Links, yeah. Yep, yep. <laughs> links to everything are in both our bios. Um, I've got a link directly to her shop in my bio, and make sure you're following both of us because she's been posting all sorts of pretty colorways. And yeah, thank you guys so much for joining us, and thank yeah. you so much, Lily. This was really fun getting to sit and chat and yeah. discuss all the things <laughs> for sure. And then Angela just said, "I'm from Crafty Like a Monkey," that she'll do a coupon for the Indie Sock Long. So oh yay! Yeah. Well, Angela, I'm going to contact you because we still have like seven, no, six months, <laughs> five months. I don't know yeah. where we're at in the year. <laughs> yeah. uh, we've still got some months left. So we'll, we'll talk and figure something out here because that would be fun. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Thank have you, a good day. You too. Hey, Bye. thanks. Mm -hmm. Bye.